everyone's yeah. favorite topic, right? Yeah. I know it's not, it's not, but it's a necessary conversation, and I'm glad to see all of those of you all that are here to participate, because I think it's a step one for us to first talk about uh, our finances, talk about budgeting, so that we can see what it is that we, how we're spending, what we're spending our money on, and then we can see or look for ways to obviously better manage our money. But it really starts with our, our mind and our mindset. Sometimes a lot of the ways that we spend our money, that we save our money, that we use our money, honestly, it's passed down from generation to generation. How maybe we saw our parents or our grandparents, maybe they saved money under their mattress instead of the bank. Just, just blink or just now, y'all to tell me, you know? That's a lot of times how some people save. Or many of us don't take the time to look to see where our money or how we are spending our money. You know, you don't have to, like I said, don't nod, don't blink, but a lot of times these accounts come with uh, overdraft protection. So we might not look to see how it is that we're spending our money, and then y'all know the difference between the red numbers and the black numbers, right? When you log in, a lot of times we know the red means, uh-oh, we didn't do something right, but we have these accounts that are, you know, protecting us, so they say they're protecting our other account, but it's not holding us accountable for how it is that we spend. So I am a little bit old school, and I got a piece of paper. I got pens for y'all. This is to pass out everybody a pen. We'll get y'all a pen. We got a worksheet that we're going to do, because it's important, as I said, for us to see where our money is going and how we're spending. And it's not uh, an indictment. It's not to talk bad about anybody or, or make you feel bad. It's just a way to open our eyes to our money, how we see our money, how we view our money. It's just maybe a better way to be better stewards of our money. I know a lot of times we hear pastors talking about tithing, and a lot of times people are afraid or they think that they don't have it. But again, a lot of times, again, it's because we're not looking to see what it is that we're bringing in and how it is that we're going out. So that's what we're going to start with today. My worksheet, I think, is going to have us to outline all of our uh, expenses. And, you know, you, can, you need some space, so don't be ashamed of cover your paper like you're in school. But it's just to give you, uh, as I said, an opportunity to put exercise. And I actually do this for myself in Excel. I'm a spreadsheet kind of girl. A lot of times I might just have a piece of pen, I mean, a piece of paper and a pencil. But when you get to kind of see what it is that you're um spending your money on, it might make you think twice about when we're asking God for more, but he's looking at what we're doing with what he's giving us now. We, we got to be doing right. Y'all agree? Yes. All right, y'all, I know what's money. I know what's money. We got to make this fun. All right. Now, again, this, this is y'all's business, but it's good to know your own business. So let's, you know, as you can see, this is a, a budgeting worksheet. And so what this is essentially doing is having you to be accountable for your monthly expenses, and not just the amount, but the date that it's due. You know, sometimes uh, certain bills or certain creditors will give you, you know, a grace period, but I feel like they much quicker to give you a late fee. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? You gotta say amen, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so, you know, I'm in. Can't see with my glasses up close age, okay? So, the first uh, section, is I guess the, uh, page one would be, oh, the one with the title when it says budget and worksheet. It wants you to start with home. So, you know, we have some expenses that are going to be non-negotiable, right? We got to make sure we got a place to live. We need some utilities. We need to be able to, you know, get some water, some electric. And we're going to need to be able to, to eat, too. So starting with home, you want to be able to write down your mortgage. Or if you're not a homeowner yet, you want to write down your rent. And so not just put in the amount, but make sure you put the due date too. And this is something you all will be able to take with you and be able to have for you to use as a reference. So starting with home, you want to include now for uh, many homeowners, a lot of the, the, the taxes and insurance are maybe included in your mortgage uh, payment. For those who are part of a, a homeowners association, you also have that uh, fee as well. Now, utilities, I know utilities can fluctuate, obviously, depending on the season. You know, we got the electric going to be a little higher in the summertime. If spring and summer we get here. Uh, you know, normally our gas will be a little, if you have gas heat, um, your gas will be a little higher in the, in the wintertime. Or some of us may have all electric 
So we know what that bill looks like too. On here, you also put your mobile phone where you see cellular phone. If you have your uh, satellite or, or cable TV, this maybe it's a little dated. A lot of people like to stream. You might have your so if you have your Netflix or Hulu subscription, or if you got both, all of the above, include your anything that you use to watch TV. Include that on that cable and satellite line. Oh, I know some of us may have a, a bundle. So where you may have the uh, cable or the TV and internet are uh, in one. If you don't know the, if it's just one cost, you can put that on either line, on the internet line or the uh, satellite line. Y'all see landline, who still has a home phone? Me. It's a bundle. Right, okay, so, okay, so right, if you have the home, internet, and satellite all on one, just put that on the one line, whether it's on internet or satellite line. You, you don't have to break that out. I still got, I got home. It's for my alarm system. How does? Okay. Oh, that's this. <laughs> now, transportation. If you have a car payment, if I'm going too fast, let me know. And this has questions too. I don't, I don't have to just be like the teacher. We can make this interactive. So if you have a, a, a car note, put that on here. Uh, your car insurance. Now, gas. So yes, gas is a part of transportation. But I'm gonna tell you how I would do uh, an expense like gas. So like on the, the worksheet that I use, I'll do all of the things that I know. You know, you know that your mobile phone bill is going to be the same every month. Like I know the mortgage is going to be the same amount every month. But am I going to get the same amount of gas every month? No. no I don't know. So honestly on the sheet that I use, I, I'll do all of the things that I know got to happen from the 1st to the 30th. And then I'll put a line below that. I mean I'll put a line and then those are the things, the other things I list out that will, you know, fluctuate. So that's going to be for the ladies, that's going to be hair, nails. Right. Uh, for the gentlemen, it may be the you know the barber shop. For the ladies and the men, it may be uh, you know uh, new footwear. So things like that, we're going to talk about too. Those are the things I call below the line. But this is covering what's supposed to be the the, the main things, the things that we know that we have to do. So don't forget your uh, car insurance, repairs and maintenance. I would say skip that because that's not some you know those are going to that could fluctuate. For those that may not have a car or have a car payment, if you're using the your ride share as your mode of transportation, use put the number down. I, it says under other tolls, taxis, parking, subway, bus. But that's where I would put um, your ride share, your Uber, Lyft expenses that you that you know on a monthly about how much you do on a monthly basis. For insurance, now many of us have insurances through work. So that we don't, you know, quote unquote, pay separately. But you have any of these insurances outside of work, you want to write down that amount and that due date as well. Any questions? I'm not going too fast. Nobody bought the paper up and threw it yet, did they? Okay. <laughs> Under debt payments. We like the credit card when we're in line, but then the bill comes, right? So we want to write down, so the one difference on here, yes, under, uh, in that amount column, I want you to write down your monthly amount, but right beside where it says credit card one, credit card two, I want you to put down the total amount that you owe on that credit card. So the reason that's important, although this says to list minimums only, <clears throat> we know that if we are paying the minimum, as long as we continue to pay the minimum and carry the balance, we are going to keep incurring or keep accruing what? Interest. And that is going to contribute to us keeping a credit card balance. So I think it's important for us to know not just what we are paying, but how much we owe on that card. So put down, so right under, or like I said, right beside where it says credit card one or credit card two, put down the total amount, the total amount you owe. And the reason why it's 
you good to know that it's not to, to penalize you or make you feel bad, but if you start to make a concerted effort, a, a focused effort on paying off the car, if you continue to use this sheet, you get to cross off the amount that you wrote down today and you get to put a lower amount. And then the next time you start, you know, you're working on that car, you're going to start putting a lower amount. So it's really to reward yourself in knowing that you're working on paying off that debt. Okay? So, I think page one is kind of what, what covers how I said on my spreadsheet, I'll put all of the things that I know, and then normally I'll make a line and then I'll put the things that I, you know, I guess the top part would maybe be the needs, and then the bottom part, or for us, page two, is going to kind of be the, the wants. And that's where we're going to have to do a little focusing too. So, y'all ready for page two? Flip over to, oh, well, no, they want you to add up. Sorry, add up page one. <laughs> I heard a grunt. <laughs> put put your subtotal on uh, page at the bottom of page one. All right. So your total from page one, you want to put on the top of your subtotal from page one. Let's put on the top of page two. All right. So y'all see page two is about to be the, the the fun part. Okay. How much a month are we spending on uh, groceries? And, well, some people might be oil, but and dining out. Anybody ever been to the uh, grocery store but then bought something to eat that night? Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Oh, it's first lady, too. See? It's no, just as a no judgment zone, okay? I'm like, ooh, I got everything I need. For the week. Now, what are we about to eat tonight? That's how, that's how that works. That's how that works. So, so no, no judgment zone. So, about how much are you spending on groceries? But again, we're talking about for the month. And then how much are you spending on dining out? Here's the thing. It's, I mean, it's not the wrong with going out to eat. It's not the wrong you know, you, you got to eat. But are you doing it within the budget? So that's what we that's what that's that's what we're gonna find out and fill it out these numbers. Uh, monthly uh, child child care. What are you paying in child care? Uh, paying out. These are remember these are amount. These are all money going out the door. Out the door. What are you paying? Do you pay child support? Pay any uh, alimony? Do you pay any school tuition? Ooh, uh, that line. <laughs> I know y'all probably thought I just graduated, but uh, <laughs> no, I have a sophomore in college, so I got a number for that line too. Personal care. Listen, haircuts and hair salons, I, I need mean, that to be on the top line. But personal care, what are we paying for our, our some of our grooming? We got prescriptions. That's a that's a necess that's a necessity. I would have had that, I would have put that on the first page, but your medications, toiletries and makeup, I mean, I guess if you can separate that out, that might be in somebody's grocery total. So don't think if you have to have something on every line, you may have something included on a, one of the other lines. Yes, ma'am. I'm with you, I'm with you. Clothing. They say, what y'all spending? What y'all what y'all buying? What y'all shopping for? <laughs> Who, who's got a pet? You got a pet too? What, dog? Yeah. It's in here. It's in here. It's in here. It's in here. Now it says the vet bills at the group. Now you got to put the clothes on the line for the door. Okay. So they got the line for your clothes, your shopping, and we got to take care of the pets. The pets, the pets just brought somebody to kids. So pet, pet care. <laughs> All right. Entertainment. The movies, the concerts. I don't know. I, I like Beyonce, but I got to listen to her. I just got to listen to her on that music. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Some folks probably don't even remember. We used to go to uh, we used to go to Hats to buy your tickets. I did. Yeah. 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 Oh, go to Hats to buy tickets. <laughs> Wax and because I wasn't paying no fees. I wasn't paying no fees and buying tickets in person. So entertainment. Now again, obviously I know this could fluctuate. But we're just saying about, you know, in the wintertime, we might not be out as much because it's cold, but, you know, what they say now, we outside. So the entertainment line might be a little heavier. Does that include football tickets for the Pittsburgh Steelers going to Super Bowl? Uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Dr. Washington just cleared it up. He just saved your little money, Omar. Thank you, Dr. Washington. It just, just had a draft. You see, he tried to put them steals in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, and then other. Now, Pastor, I didn't make this spreadsheet. I don't know who put tithes and donations at the bottom, but y'all write down. We're going to put that given. That's part of our expenses, too, right? So when you finish all of that, you know, you already have your total from the from the first page at the top. Now you want to add up your additional expenses that you put on the second page and see what total you get. And you, you're going to keep the total to yourself, but I'm going to tell you why you need your total. Yeah. <laughs> get your total together. Oh, let me give y'all some examples so y'all start adding. Let me give y'all some examples of up that is not listed here. Uh, and again, there's a no judgment zone. But I did this same work worksheet workshop to somebody, and you know what they had to put in their oven? Cigarettes. Uh, if you live in DC, there are certain things that are legal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, hey, we just right. Right. you know. Minister Donna said, you know, she will keep it real. So I said, she tasked me with this. I got to keep it real, too. So when we say all expenses, we talk about all expenses, okay? Yeah. Making sure we clear. If you didn't, if you went out last night and you didn't get there before 10 o'clock, <laughs> and it was a fee, that's part of your expenses. All right. Now, did everybody, did everybody get their total? Okay. So now you've got your total, and I'm going to say, you know, which is about close, because as we say, certain things, certain expenses can fluctuate. So now you have your total expenses for the month. Now what you need to write down in the corner, somewhere, somewhere on this table, or write it right by, I'm sorry, write it right underneath your total. Write down how much money you bring in in one month. And which number do we want to be the bigger number? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay if it's not, but we got to talk about it. Yeah. Now you write down how much you did. Everybody write down how much they bring in. <laughs> now, it's a lot of calculators. It's a lot of calculators. Okay. Now, do <laughs> She said she did a real calculation. She wasn't the one that you could plug into the wall because some of that right in her iPhones. <laughs> now, the reason why we did this, the reason why we did this exercise is because, like I said, we have to do a better job of paying attention to our money. And we always talk about, we hear uh, from the pulpit, we hear our pastors talking about tithes, we hear them talking about offering. And a lot of times I think that, you know, many of us think we don't have it to give. But it's honestly because we haven't taken a look at our money to see what we are giving our, our money to and give it, spending our money on. Would you all agree? Yes. yes. And again, this is not to judge to say, don't do this or do this, but it's for us to take a very close look at how we're spending our money and to see, is it certain places that we need to cut back? Are there things that we see that we're spending our money on or, or, and didn't realize that, you know, because a lot of times, let's say you do something weekly. Or if you do something every two weeks. Or let's say you go out, let's say you go out maybe one week, you go out to eat once, but then the next week you went out to eat three times. Now your expenses for, for eating out have now gone up. 
where we probably could have saved some if we did cook. And I know sometimes I don't feel like cooking either, okay? I want y'all to know I'm I'm human too, and I've filled this year out before too, so I get it. But when we're talking about how we're spending or saying that we don't have enough, or if we're asking God for more, I just know, again, just speaking personally, that he cannot bless us or give us more if we don't take care of what he's already given us now. We know that he says that he'll supply all of our needs, right? But then we also have to identify what we consider a need versus what we consider a want. And I've also heard something about, you know, a short-term sacrifice will result in a long-term gain. So if we take a look at some of the things that we've written down and we put numbers by, are there certain things that maybe we need to give up for a certain, a certain period of time so that we can save some money or be able to have some money to be able to give, to be a blessing to others? Is it something that we need to give up completely so that we can have more income to be able to give, to be able to pay down our debt? So while we do have these expenses that, again, we know that some of our expenses are, are non-negotiable. We know that the rent is due. We know that uh, utilities need to be on. But there are other things that we have on this list that we see that maybe we have to do a better job at when it comes to managing our money. Did anybody learn that or get that from filling out this, this worksheet? You did? Okay. Anybody else? Because a lot of times, I'm going to tell you, I feel like my mind is the worst place to keep something. So a lot of times for me, and I don't know if this is the same for you, but we will do this exercise, but we'll do it in our head. And it's a lot of times it ends up being something that we will forget until that auto debit, that automatic charge comes out of our account. And we're like, wait, what? Another thing, another reason to write down our, uh, our expenses and to see how much we're bringing in. Anybody uh, use auto pay or a lot of uh, auto pay on a lot of our bills? And now some people do it because they say, "Oh, well, I don't want to forget," or they, you know, find it to be a convenience. But if we're not keeping track of those things, and then something comes out, I, I seen I seen red before. I'm like, I know I'm up here teaching it, but I seen red when I logged in before, and I had to make some magic happen. Anybody else? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know what that red. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> but it's okay because the point in doing this, as I said, is for us to avoid that sort of thing. Now, let's let's talk uh, quickly about saving. In the beginning, I talked about uh, overdraft protection, which I'm I'm not the biggest fan of because I feel like a lot of times it um, it just it forces us or doesn't force us to do things like this. Now we may again we may forget about an expense, we might forget about an auto draft, but then that other account will come and, and save us. But do we actually go and put the money back? A lot of times those overdraft accounts are what? Are savings accounts. But are we actually saving money or is the account saving us from the bad spending or the mismanagement that we did? So let's make sure, again, so on our sheets, now that we've written down everything, does anybody, or I didn't see any hands, or we can uh, see where now now that they've seen the expenses, maybe places that they can uh, find some savings? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good, that's good. Was anybody else, like I said, like me, doing this in their head at first? Yes. But then, <laughs> but then finding that that is not a good place to keep it down. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I, and I think, that, and you know, we have, okay, cool. That's how I keep track of my business and what I spend, how I spend. So I get a good thorough breakdown every month. Yeah, does the, does the bank do the thing where it sends the chart and it'll yeah. say, you know, you yeah. spent this much on that? Okay. Or does anybody else's bank, it'll say, you know, you've been spending, like it'll show you like how, how you've been spending. Like at this rate, by the end of the month, you're going to have, <laughs> you're going to need to call somebody. I'm sorry, you had uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay. Don't talk. Okay, go ahead. I, um, I told myself I can talk. Okay. I have a lot of credit cards, and, and I said, wait, who's it for? No, 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 no. Four students have to pay those credit cards off. And when it's paid, they can call savings. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to do. Don't get no more credit cards. 
call on the same day every year. Why we not? Why we not planning for it? Right. That's why we not planning for it? There's just certain things that we are should be planning for. We know it's going to happen. We know it's coming. So that way we don't have to go into our savings to to make Christmas happen. That way we don't have to not give online or on, on Sunday morning because we already know when Christmas is coming, right? Yes. And Lord knows whoever you buy for probably already can tell you right now what they want for Christmas. And so we can we can plan for it, right? So I think that's a great example. When we we know what's coming, we need to plan accordingly. Do y'all think that's fair? Yeah. Yeah. To not put the strain and the stress on yourself for when Christmas times come, to you to use the, the credit card or to like I said to dip into your savings. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, every year I have a plan for Christmas. Period. Mm -hmm. Give give out the same amount. Give it to whoever I give it to, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's right. That's that's that. I have a plan for Christmas. But one thing I have a a card that I use for repair for uh, my car, mm -hmm. and no matter. Wherever I take it at, I basically take it to Toyota. But if I take it anywhere else, and they offer you a credit card if if you pay if you if you get this um, this service, right? They'll give you twenty five dollars and all this stuff. But my card is like they'll um, give you you got three or four months to pay your balance off. Mm -hmm. I love those cards. Yes, and I, I make sure that I pay the whole thing off before. Because yeah, I don't because they'll take the money back that they gave. Right. Uh -huh. I think that this is also a good example. And I know uh -huh. I saw I know I saw another hand uh -huh. in taking advantage of certain deals with credit cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I needed new tires. Mm -hmm. I went, yeah. you know, went to Just Tires right there on Marlboro Pike mm -hmm. and said, oh, okay, I can pay the tires off for six months, mm -hmm. no interest. So I planned for that. I planned that by mm -hmm. I think it was April fifteenth was going to be the mm -hmm. six month that. I knew, okay, I owe, let's say, $700, but then I was going to make that plan to pay that off before the due date when the interest would accrue. Uh, you see, you'll see that with the furniture stores. You'll see that with different things that you buy, they'll give you that no interest for a specific period of time. So, you know, and another thing, we don't always have to have everything all the, way, all the time right up front. And I know it's easier said than done. We get a new place and we want it fully furnished. I mean, you can even get left. I mean, for a little bit, but it's just to not put the strain and stress. Just to not put the strain and stress on yourself. I mean, my children would love if I left them just eating their lap so they could be in front of the TV, but I, I don't. They, they got another table. But when we first moved, they got to be eating their lap because I hadn't bought the table yet. Short term sacrifice for a long term gain. Did I see uh, another hand? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would say that you have to plan your money. You know, thank you for uh, showing us because at first I was like, every every time my kids want, needed something, I gave them my card, you know, mm -hmm. and they don't have it. Um, and I, I'm guilty of um, doing a whole lot of door, door dash. Mm -hmm. um, also, when you, when you swipe your cards in, um, at the stores or you use it online or whatever, be careful because, you know, you don't know who's, who's scamming you. Oh, another thing that is not on this spreadsheet mm -hmm. that we have to uh, that we should write a line for is withdrawal. Oh. So a lot of times we're thinking about what we when we're swiping and we're swiping, but you know you go into the ATM and you essentially swipe it for a hundred dollars. How are you spending that hundred dollars? So you definitely need to be keeping uh, track of your cash on your cash as well. So. At, Anytime that you're doing a, a withdrawal, you need to write that down too. Because, 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 what are you, what are you doing with that money? Right. Yeah, I'm not asking right now. Yeah. I'm telling you, to ask yourself. Would you, <laughs> would you do that? Okay. Rhetorical question. Just for right now, but you better write it down when you get. <laughs> what you do with that $50? So again, just making sure that uh, you're keeping track of your money. Uh, another thing that I wanted to uh, share is a lot of times we are assuming or guessing certain things like what what my credit score should be before I go buy a house or you know I can't afford I can please use your resources any DC residents all right me too so I'm very familiar with a lot of things that uh, DC offers not that Maryland doesn't offer it too for a first-time home buyer program I think a lot of times we think I don't have this amount in the bank I don't have this credit score so I can't XYZ 
Let's stop telling ourselves what we can't do and find out what we can do. There are a lot of programs that are available to you, no matter where you live. I said DC because I'm in DC. I know what uh, a lot of what DC offers. But go and see what your 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 city, your county offers, so that you know what you have to work towards or look forward to. Someone thinks, oh, I don't have this, uh, you know, credit score, so I can't buy a home. When your credit score could be fine, or maybe it's a few points off. And now it's time for you to start the, that home buying process. Or so you'll know exactly what steps you need to take. So let's def, please don't assume, please do not tell yourself what you can't do, as opposed to going and finding out one uh, your, your, your state or your county's website, what it is that you need to do. If that's something that you're interested in, your home ownership, you want to go ahead and know what it is you need to do to take the, uh, take the necessary steps to make it happen. All right, any other uh, questions or comments? Oh, Sister Diane? I think you should also add on this list retainer stuff. Yes, I'm sorry. I should have started. So, let's talk about this. Any videos? Any videos? I just have to be twirling like my tongue. Let's, let's, let's talk about uh, that. So, and I think that this is a, a good thing, just to, just to challenge yourself as well. So, um, we talk about uh, the tithe being 10%. I'm just using 10 it's to be easy math, okay? And then we also talk about paying ourselves, 10%. So now you realize that really leaves us with 80% of that number, that last number we wrote down um, for, for how much that we bring in. So if you say, let's just take $1,000. If I 10% is $100, now I've paid myself $100. 10% now I've given, you know, to God $100, and I have $800 left. So now what are my, what are my expenses? What is it that I'm, uh, what is it that I have to do? What is it that's required of me to maintain my household, to maintain, you know, getting to work, whatever, with that $800? We should never feel guilty about paying ourselves and paying God. So, again, that's another place where we need to look and see how we are spending that we aren't able to at least start there with paying ourselves and paying God. Here's the thing. I say I use 10% for easy math, but cut that in half. Let's say, you know, your budget allows you to say, all right, well, you know what? I got this $100 to set aside. Pay yourself 50 and, and, and get 50 in, in your offering. I'm a witness. It's definitely going to feel good. You might, you might not think it feels good when you give it, but you, you're going to feel good when you get back. So that's another way to uh, make sure, and thank you so much for bringing it up when we talk about uh, savings. Now, I, I know I talked about, you know, making sure you're paying off your debt and things like that, but we have to be prepared for emergencies. We don't know what would come up. And again, sometimes some of us have an emergency credit card, but what about an emergency fund? Now, I read, and people can have, you know, their different ideas. I read that at the least you have $1,000 in an emergency fund. Because a lot of times, again, the car repair or the, you know, something breaks. So let's say you have a thousand. Now, a thousand dollars might sound like a whole lot to, to many of us. But if we started with paying ourselves first, let's start with the 50. Now we only got 950. Or maybe any time that we do have, you know, when we um, get to that end of the month or the end of that two week period, the money that's left over, why not put some of, why not put some of that to the side? And then we're also able to have a way to um, be able to give um, some sort of tithe and offer. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Anything else or any other uh, questions or comments? Again, just, just because this is what I do doesn't mean that we don't have other things that we can share. Just like the, you all are the participants, but you all share a lot of good ideas and ways that you all are, are managing your uh, money. So, sure. Um, this is just another idea. The church knows things that happen that are going to happen, like Christmas. Mm -hmm. They know that um, we're going to have, just say, a harvest fest. We know we're going to have a backpack in the winter. And we know that, that we should be prepared also mm -hmm. in advance. That it shouldn't be a month before or a day before. And, and those things start also. That is a good point. Um, during the pandemic, there were a lot of uh, food giveaways. Anybody participate in the in the food giveaways? And there are still others going on now. So 
this that's also a way to uh, think about as far as you know cutting uh, costs or your, or your grocery costs. Yeah. There's still food giveaways that go on um, even now. Definitely look into that. I mean, it was definitely a, a, a help. I was in a position a lot of times where I had food to give away to be able to share with others because there was so much being given away. So again, definitely look for different ways to be able to save till you get to the point where, as I said, expenses are down, the income's up, and you know, you're good. You're in a good, good, good space, a good place. But um, definitely, like I said, that, that page two, page two has a lot of the expenses that, that fluctuate, or I should say that we can control. So let's make sure that we're looking at that. A lot of times, obviously at our jobs, we're only with so much in control of our income. We have a specific salary that we pay every two weeks. Um, many of us, or a lot of us may have a, a small business, so we're able to earn some additional income. But maybe that's also a way that you can look to uh, save money as well. A lot of times people may get a second um, job and get another source of income. And a lot of times it may be to just cover the expenses um, that we do have on page one. And that's understandable. But I have definitely encountered people that say, I ask, if you had, this is something that I do in a, in a presentation I, I, I do. I'm a, a licensed life insurance agent. So if I talk to people about getting their insurance license, I always say, nobody wants to, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to sell life insurance, okay? But people do go to bed and a lot of times wake up with money on their mind. It could be a, a problem. It could be a money problem, money issue. It could be a goal. And a lot of times it takes money. So I always ask people to fill in this blank. If I had X amount of extra dollars a month, I could this. Now this is outside of, again, like I said, your, your normal expenses or whatever. A lot of times people say, Oh, I could um, be contributing more to my retirement. Or somebody say, you know, well, I could cover my, my car. So that's a lot of times I ask people, I think about, you know, if you had the additional money, what would you do with it? What, so what is, your, what is your goal in even, you know, the, the work that you do now or, or having another source of income? So that's something to also uh, consider as well. Now, I don't know what's going on in the kitchen, but I'm uh, I'm, I'm done. If unless anybody else had any other questions or uh, comments, I had a question. Yes, ma'am. So um, I want to get my first credit card, but I'm a little scared because I've heard your first what? Credit card. Credit card. Uh huh. But I'm a little scared because I've heard horror stories. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't really know which one to get. But I know I want the one with the rewards that I can build my credit score with. Mm -hmm. So what are the rewards? What does that mean? Well, it depends on the, the credit card. So having a credit card, period, is going to contribute to your credit score because now you've, someone has said that you are credit worthy, you've opened up a credit card, you have a line of credit. So that is going to contribute to your credit your, your credit score. Now, which card, I mean, that, that's up to you. That's, it's just so many to choose from. Many different cards have different rewards. Um, you know, you have ones that you can get the rewards back in cash. Some of them have points that you can use towards things. But also, those are, rewards are going to be determined by the amount of spending you do. So, you know, you don't want to, you know, max the card out because you wanted to get all of these reward points. You're just opening the card and using it from time to time and paying it off to help to build your credit. Okay. So the, the type of card, as far as rewards, that's up to you. You, you just kind of shop around because that's what every single card is. Every other card is talking about rewards. So you have to just see what uh, makes sense for you. I also will recommend, I don't know, are there any cards now that are not charging this annual fee? You want to, you know, try to avoid those sorts of, sorts of things. But, yeah, it's, it's tough because you hear so much about credit, like credit is bad, credit is bad. And a lot of times there, there, are, there are some bad credit. You have cards that are charging outrageous interest rates and things like that. But, no, credit can be a good thing because it does help to um, build your credit score. It shows that you are a good a good customer, a good client, because you use your card um, responsibly. You use it, you pay it off, you're not maxing it out, you're not going over the limit. So, credit I, is now. I won't be paid. a part of the little horror story if I just you use won't. it and then pay it. Yes, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> that's correct. All right. Uh, I don't have anything else. I would appreciate you all uh, signing in. And I'm not sure if... Um, how much detail Minister Donna went into, but we, uh, Hemingway was blessed with a grant 
um, and it's called Thriving Congregations. So as a part of that, this is the, the, the kickoff where we are supposed to do different programming to help the congregation to thrive. And so in, we started with talking about finances uh, first and foremost, budgeting, helping folks to see their finances, see how they're spending, and then we'll have uh, another series of events and seminars just to help um, folks with things like this. So I would appreciate you signing uh, in. We won't be spamming you because I mean, I don't have anything. We won't be giving you information out. But the uh, grant does want us to, you know, show uh, our attendees. So it's just name, email, and phone number. Um, if you are interested in having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's free uh, with me to talk more about uh, finances, budgeting, um, insurance, or um, investing. So say all right, thank you all so much.